October of 1919, one of the greatest tragedies in American history occurred near the town of Elaine, Arkansas, and Phillips County. We are certain that a reign of terror against the black population of that part of Phillips County took place. We are certain that uh, machine gun crews went out looking for people to gun down. We are certain that blacks were brought in to, in effect, concentration camps and held uh, in all violation of all the laws of, of the state of Arkansas. For the next 80 years, many people, blacks and whites, preferred to pretend it never happened. Colored people was, was fear, had more fear than they got now. A lot of things that they, they were scared, they just ready to talk about. Thus, not only was a major catastrophe ignored, but even more important, the legacy that rose out of its ashes was also forgotten. My name is Archie Davis, and I'm an actor. I was born in Cogdell, Georgia in 1917, two years before the tragedy in Elaine. Yet, despite geographical differences, the world of rural Arkansas was not much different from the world of rural Georgia. Both were part of the South, then a region where black people were segregated from whites by custom and law. As a black person, I was forbidden to eat in the same restaurant, study in the same school, pray in the same church, or be admitted to the same hospital. Like every other Southern black person, I was expected to learn my place as a second-class citizen. And if I didn't, calamity could strike me down suddenly and without warning. I still remember the terrifying stories I heard as a child of how white men in white hoods burned crosses, whipped, hung, and burned to death black men and women who had transgressed the racial codes. To me, these tales always carried with them the smell of burning flesh. In the south of my childhood, whites considered the cotton fields the best place for most black people. White planters needed cheap black labor to grow and pick their cotton. Among the richest fields in the world, a hundreds of thousands of square miles of land in the Arkansas Delta, the men and women who work the land are supposed to receive half the cotton crop in exchange for their labor. But many landlords cheat them out of their rightful share. The man would take your, your cotton, and then the man that stole your head credit, he run the books up on you, so you didn't have nothing. You work a whole year and, and hand pick 40 bales of cotton and come out with nothing. They kept him in debt, this, this black or white, particularly blacks. Uh, and he never did get out of debt, so he might be living on the same plantation for 10, 15, 20 years and never get out of debt. They work you like a, a dog or something. They was two witches. They would do you just like, I, said, <clears throat> I would say, just like you you would do old dog or hog or something. This is the way things were in the South in the early 20th century. But although nobody knew it then, the winds of change are rising, set in motion, by a catastrophic war. In 1917, America enters World War I, which Woodrow Wilson proclaims will make the world safe for democracy. Black soldiers fight with courage, bringing honor to themselves and their country. As they return home, they are greeted with the fiery words of the black leader W.E.B. Du Bois. By the God of heaven, we are cowards and jackasses if we do not marshal our brain and brawn to fight a sterner, longer, more unbending battle against the forces of hell in our own land. Whites react violently to this new militancy. In the red summer of 1919, so-called because blood flows in the streets, Race riots erupt in over 350 cities. In Chicago, 23 blacks and 15 whites are killed. In Washington, D.C., four whites and two blacks. 
whites are astounded that blacks dare to fight back. On the night of September 30th, 1919, in Phillips County, Arkansas, a small group of black men and women are also planning a fight against their oppressors. They have organized into a union, the Progressive Farmers and Household Union of America. Their plan is to sue their landlords for money owed them for their crops and for an itemized accounting of their charges at the store. But the farmers' plans are known to their enemies, even as they meet two white law enforcement officers arrive at the church. Shots are fired, and in the confusion, a white man is killed. His death triggers a massive reprisal. Terror reigns. Whites falsely claim blacks are in a state of insurrection. A local white sheriff sends out a call for men to hunt Mr. Nigger in his lair. The call went out for Mississippians to come to the rescue of the white men in Phillips County who were under severe attack. And so they jumped into cars and they jumped into trains, and at least according to the oral sources that I've talked to, they fired out of the windows at every black they saw. Women in the fields, uh, it didn't matter. If it was black and moving, it was target practice. Hundreds of farmers are trapped. Among them is Frank Moore. The whites sent word that they was coming down here and kill every nigger they found. There were 300 or 400 more white men with guns shooting and killing women and children. Farmers are not the only target for the mob. Dr. D.A.E. Johnson, a prominent dentist from Helena, Arkansas, and his three brothers are seized. They're chained together in a car and shot to death. Soldiers from the U.S. Army eventually restore order. By the time the shooting ends, officially, 25 blacks and five whites are dead. Some say, however, that as many as 200 blacks might have been killed, their bodies dumped in the Mississippi River or left to rot in the cane break. The stench of the dead can be smelled for miles. Officially, blacks are blamed for the riot. The general uh, reaction of the white establishment in, in Phillips County in the aftermath of the uh, riot was a charge that was leveled against the black population that they were in a secret conspiracy to rise up and to overthrow the white power structure and the landowning class in eastern Arkansas. I think the Elaine White was about the fact that farmers, black farmers in Phillips County were tired of not sharing the wealth that they were producing. And the Progressive Farmers and Household Union was an attempt on their part to share the wealth. Because white men have been killed, more black men must die. Hundreds are detained, 67 are sent to prison, and 12 are tried by an all-white jury for the murder of whites. As the trial begins, a mob surrounds the court building, warning the court that if the accused are not sentenced to death, the mob will lynch them. For a black defendant to, to go into that atmosphere was uh, almost ridiculous in the sense that they hadn't even talked to their attorneys who had been appointed for them. The attorneys, uh, it, for example, in the first trial, uh, the, the uh, attorney, appointed attorney, stood up and said, ladies and gentlemen, I hadn't even talked to my client. There's always been the effort of uh, the establishment in the South to always maintain that black people get a fair shake. And uh, the basic story is that uh, when you have a black person charged with an offense, uh, the judge would say, well, you know, uh, boy, uh, I'm going to make sure that you get a good lawyer. 
then I'm going to make sure that you get a fair trial, and then we're going to hang you. And uh, that's, in essence, kind of what happened in the Elaine case.